Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today is going to be an explanatory video on eBird. A lot of people use it and a lot of people don't really know about it. Um, and this is for all the beginners that have just got onto eBird and uh, don't know what they're going to do. So I'm going to go through everything and if you do know some things but don't know others, uh, I'm going to have chapters for this video so you can go and skip past sections once you um, already know them. So let's get started. So eBird is a tool, if you guys didn't know, where you can submit species, uh, explore hotspots, um, you can get to know other birders and see what other birders uh, see in certain locations. You can also upload photos and findings. Um, and altogether, this all helps science. Let's start with submit. When I click on submit, I personally don't submit on a computer because I find the computer uh, is a bit harder to submit on and I use my phone. So I'm going to be showing you guys now what you need to do. Once you've installed the eBird app, you will get this as the front page. You All you have to do is click Start Checklist and click up the right at the coordinates. Once you've done that, scroll down to the one you're at and you're all ready to go. It's mapping where you are and the kilometers you take as well. And it also maps your trail where you're walking, which is also really cool. So when you go back on your computer, you can see the trail you walked. Okay, so you can also do it on your computer as well. So we'll, you just choose the location or if you have to find a new one, you just enter the region down there. And you do basically the same thing. You just enter the duration of the trip, the distance, the start time and all that. It's really simple and it will eventually, it's not gonna work, but it will eventually give you a list of what I just had on the phone. Okay, so before I go through the rest of the top sections, we're going to go over to profile. All you have to do to do that is click on your username at the top right and click on profile. Once you've done that, it will bring you to um, your profile that other eBirders can see. As you can see, this is me. And we can see that my account is public. Some people don't have theirs public and you can change it by down in privacy section of the settings. If you scroll down, you'll see your photos um, if you submit photos for a certain trip. And there's also audio there as well. Actually, if you scroll down on the home page, you'll see top photos Australia and yours could be there. And a lot of people look at those photos and see them. It's basically a really cool way to get your photos on an identification spot on a certain species, which I'm going to show you guys right now. Once you've clicked on the Explore tab, you'll be left with this uh, section here and you'll have Explore Species. This is where you can look at any species in the entire world that is on eBird. We're going to go look at Rainbow Beater. If we scroll down, you'll see the Species Ranger Map, which is all around Australia. And you can also see statistics of how many have... If you scroll down, we've got the top photos for that particular species and mine is second there with the 94 five star ratings. You've also got audio and video. Next thing is explore regions. This is probably the thing I use the most and it's really good to use if you're traveling or on a holiday. So I live on the Sunshine Coast. So we're gonna go put Sunshine Coast in the region. It will pop up with hotspots or species of you can do is ones and it will change. I've clicked on hotspots just then, and as you can see, it shows me the top 100 hotspots on the Sunshine Coast. Number one is Noose National Park, number two is Lake McDonald Birdhide, and so and so. So let's say we were on holidays on the Sunshine Coast near you and Manic Dam. We can all we have to do is click on that, and it will bring us to an, another separate page showing the species observed at this site. As you can see, I was the last person to go, and this was my checklist I took on the 20th of December, so three days ago. You'll see your recent visits, and also top eBirders there at the location. If I want to see what Chris posted on the 2nd of November, all we have to do is click on the 2nd of November, and it will show you his list that he completed. Alrighty, so we're going to head back to the Explore tab now, and we're going to head on to the Species Map. This is what 
I showed you before on the Rainbow Beater, and I'll show you with Brown Thornbill. We'll go click on Brown Thornbill, and as you can see, this is where they are found. So this tool can be uh, used, especially if you think you found a vagrant, or a species that's not really found in your area. You can look at the species map and, you know, let's see, let's say you saw a brown thornbill in Western Australia, then that'd be pretty crazy. As you can see, we're gonna head down to the more ways to explore. And this is probably the best part of the entire site is all these little things we've got down here. So explore hotspots is pretty straightforward. It's what we were on before, except it's on a map and we can see all the different hotspots. We're gonna head down here, and as you can see, there's all the hotspots for this specific area. And let's let's zoom in, and we'll click on this one right here. And this is Rosalie Waters Ocean View in Morton Bay, 79 species, and you can go and submit data if you have any. Alrighty, so the next one is photos and sounds. That is just when you search in a specific species, you'll get given photos and sounds of that species. Bar chart is uh, good to find out what you expect to see in a certain region at a certain time. So we're going to go to you know Bunya Mountains National Park and click continue. And this will be your locations. And this is what I saw when I was um, on holidays there uh, two weeks ago. I see, I saw 51 species, and it will show you when. This doesn't work as well for species you places you've been once uh, it works better for places you've been multiple times over the year next thing is alerts i have alerts turned on as they're really good to find rare birds and your year needs so i've got my rare birds on daily and year needs on daily as well as i've also got a i haven't got australian rarities on but you can all you have to do to turn that on is click subscribe you can add other regions for rare bird alerts and need alerts as well i've just added sunshine coast as that's where i live target species is a good thing to use if you're looking for a species you haven't seen before in a certain area we'll go sunshine coast show target species on my for my life list and this shows all species that i haven't got on my life list and the frequency they have found such as hardhead has a 7.16 percent frequency and i can click map to go and find out where those submissions have been from um, if we scroll down to southern bubok it will see 1.32 percent frequency and if we click on that it will bring us to the map with all the locations that it has been seen that is a that's a good one to use on holidays as you're not too sure on the areas and if you want to look for a specific species over there um, then you can just use that and find out where the most common and the most common error is top 100 is a good little game you can play with other people in your region uh, i find it it gets pretty competitive at the end of the year uh, no no prize or reward obviously but it's a really cool thing to do and it helps a lot of people uh, continue to bird over the year. So in 2020, on the Sunshine Coast, my region, by species, I'm currently ranked 14th with 165 seen uh, this year. And as you can see, top is Chris Murray with 228 species, which is a lot for this year. And then you can go also go all, t all time as well to see who is the best. And that is Greg Roberts with 291 species. Yard turtles is another cool one, um, and I do have a yard total list. Um, it's called Rainforest Sanctuary Creek, and this year I've seen 80 species in it, um, which actually ranks me 36th, 36th in Australia. Uh, with oh no, that's his monthly. Sorry, let's go there. We're ranked 37th in Australia for. Rainforest Sanctuary Creek, which is my location. Now, the good thing about yard lists is they are still completely secure. Alrighty, so to submit a, a backyard list, it's pretty simple. All you've got to do is go to the explore, sorry, to the submit tab, put in your um, location on the map, and then we're going to go, let's go Budrum and Let's go to, let's say we live in West Wombai. So we're gonna scroll all the way in, scroll, 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 and we're gonna click. 
and when I click right there, that's where we live. Um, it's actually not obviously, but hypothetically that's where we live, and then we might put in Tom's yard. And you do not click suggest as burden hotspot, and you click continue. Once you've done this, you're basically submitting it as Tom's yard. You put in the observation date, traveling, stationary, historic, etc, etc, and that will start building the list. The good thing about a backyard list that is not a hotspot is that you cannot click on it. So if we go down to my checklist I did yesterday, we can see that we cannot click on Rainforest Sanctuary Creek. And if we go back out and we go to your Mac Dam, for example, we can click on your Mac Dam. So it's a safe way, you're not going to give away your location, so don't worry about that. So once you've created your list and you've been going strong for a while, you might want to uh, add it. So you want to go to yard totals and click add yard. And we're going to search for Tom's yard and it comes up right there. So it's that's what you got to do. And it will show you your list, your etc. And it will put you on the leaderboard. And by clicking on the 80, it will bring you to the life list as well. And this is what I've seen there. Congratulations. Um, that's basically everything to do with eBird. There's a couple of small other things that I can show, I'm gonna show you right now, but these things aren't very big and I don't use them a lot. There's the, the uh, photo and sound quiz where you can quiz yourself on uh, birds in a certain region. Alrighty, so heading off the explore section, we are now on to the My eBird section. And this is a, a way that you can view uh, burning over years and your checklists uh, and a lot of stuff. So as you can see, this is me. And this year I've seen 184 species. Last year was 75 and in 2018 that was 62. Um, and for species in December, I've seen 122 species in December. That's pretty cool. And I saw 42 in uh, 2019. So it shows you your species by country, territory, or dependency. Australia is number one. And species by major region as well. It also shows you your latest media and your latest checklist. Now, before I uh, finish off this video, um, there's this little cool thing here on the uh, home page of eBird and it's the my stats now this comes directly from the my eBird tab but is always there when you search on eBird.org and you are signed in it shows you your species observed your complete checklist your species with photos and audio however this right here is pretty cool the days of checklist streaks I've had an 107 day checklist streak as you can see right here which I think is a pretty good achievement uh, a lot of people have uh, much more and also they do 365 day checklist streaks so an entire year and if you do that you get a free pair of Zeiss binoculars I think don't quote me on that but you do receive I'm pretty sure some binoculars for getting a 365 day checklist streak as a lot of not a lot of people do it so it's a really good achievement there's also the science tab the about tab which shows you what's about eBird what eBird is about the news tab and uh, also the help tab if you do need some help getting around <clears throat> so thanks everyone for watching I uh, hope you understand what eBird is now uh, a bit more and how you can use it in day-to-day -day birding so um, good luck and I'll see you later